Hey everybody, it's Alex here from iDesign. I'm here to start with just the easiest, most simple way to get started with VexCode V5 text. Now text coding can be pretty intimidating and I really wanted to just jump right into the easiest way to get started in about 10 minutes or so. So the first thing is just make sure you're using the most updated app version. Um, that's the very first step is just making sure that you're, uh, go on Vex Robotics website and that you have it updated and that you're doing that periodically as they do come out with a lot of new features. So we're creating our new project under the file menu. Um, and a good tradition is just to never use space, never use weird characters in C++ programming. So you just want to capitalize each word in your project name and then save it. Numbers are okay as well, obviously. So very first, if you click on um, the name of your project, it shows you a brief description. Um, there is nothing populated in there unless you wanted to type something and just explain what's going on in your program. And this is also where you would enable um, expert robot configuration and autocomplete if you're down that path. So there's a lot going on in the text programming, and this is half the reason I think it's so intimidating, but we're gonna actually just ignore a lot of it since it's automatically generated and it's really just what communicates your code with the robot that makes it run. But you don't really need to know what's going on in your debugger and your source files. So let's just focus on the main code here. So don't touch anything that's already been included, but your code really starts right after this VEX code initialization statement. So here we can start with anything and the first thing any program has, the first thing any robot has is a brain. So that's the only thing that's included in any standard project. And we can already start programming with the brain by typing brain. Brain with a capital B, we use our period, the dot operator, and that shows us what other functions are accessible through the brain. We can get battery information, information from the screen. So we're gonna go ahead and select that as our first statement. Do another dot period operator. And now we see a whole ton of other functions accessible under the screen, and we're gonna to go to print. You can cycle down through the arrow keys to cycle through the different options. We're gonna type in hello in quotation marks, end the parentheses, and use a semicolon to let us, the state, uh, C++ compiler know that our statement has ended. And now we're ready to download and test this very simple statement. So go ahead and download and run it, and you should just see hello printed to your screen. Um, just a friendly reminder, you can program and download programs directly through the controller, and I like to do that just to save um, running back and forth to my robot. So that's what I like to do. So all right, so now we want to do a little more than that. We have a robot with some, you know, obviously some motors, some more things going on. So let's add those in. Under robot configuration, under the device menu in the top right, we add a drivetrain, set the left and right motors, and I'm not using a gyro, so click that. Pretty standard drivetrain, I don't need to change any of these settings. And let's just give it um, an arm motor, one motor that we have as well. And you see as soon as we add the drivetrain, it's automatically populated in VEX code. So I add a motor on port 8, I'm just going to name it the arm motor, and I'll be done there. So now we have a drivetrain and one arm motor, and you see once again, it's automatically populated under the devices by VEX code. So let's go ahead and exit out of our device screen and focus on our code. So now on our next screen, similar to how we coded with the brain, we started by saying brain, we're gonna start by saying drivetrain. Use our dot operator, and now we see all of our different functions we can do. So obviously a simple drive for, it auto fills us and tells us that we wanna do forward, 10, and then you can select either inches or millimeters. You can also do drivetrain turn and other commands like that. This might seem a little confusing at first, but I will explain in just a second where you can find all these commands and how to use them. So we end our parentheses, use our semicolon, and now we want to type another command for the arm motor. So we call it by its name, the device's name. Use the dot operator, we see that there's a ton of commands we can access under the motor. And we just want to use a spin for command. We want to spin forward for, we'll say, one turn. One turns. And parentheses, use the semicolon. And now let's try out this program. So this should show a pretty easy example of stringing together basic um, motion commands using the drivetrain and the robot arm.
Excellent. So let's say we want to, you know, not use an autonomous program. But we want a driver controlled program through VEX code. So how do we set that up? Well, first thing we want to go ahead and delete these autonomous commands as they're going to um, conflict with our driver control statements. So we go back under devices in the top right, and we're going to want to add another device, just the V5 controller. And by clicking the joysticks, you can cycle the different drivetrain behaviors. And then clicking the different motors will allow you to decide wherever you want the motors to. And you can also reverse directions with the blue arrow. So you don't see anything on the main screen. What's actually created behind the scenes is a ton of driver control code just by adding in the controller and setting up those um, controller mappings. But our code is actually very clean. The only thing we need to do to create our driver control program is just a forever loop that will keep this program running. So we're going to make a while one is true, and because one is always going to be true or equal to one, we can just create a forever loop that says in closed brackets, wait 20 milliseconds. So there's brackets around just that wait command that's going to keep it in that forever while loop, and this will keep our driver control continuously refreshing and usable. So now this is all we need to establish driver control and use our controller to drive our robot um, indefinitely. Now as you start to play around with VexCode text, there's a few really helpful resources that I'd like to point out. So the first thing under the file menu is the examples. So these are all um, just example programs under each different category, covering a bunch of different topics, most common topics, things that people are going to be usually looking for. And there's also quick tutorials on setting up devices and just getting started in VEX code. The help menu in the top right has a full um, command reference. And you can also, um, so any command I type, so if I type, start typing brain screen print a value, um, I can also right click on that print command, go to command help, and it will instantly link me to a full um, description of that command and how to use it. So it's helpful if I'm um, typing something or I find a command as I'm you know, working in through a code and I want to know what it really does. But you can also see a full library of every possible command once you add the motor and the drivetrain, everything that's possible and everything that is included under that drivetrain function. Or sorry, drivetrain class. So it shows you everything that's available with VEX code text and kind of where to get started, where to find um, more different code statements that you're looking for. There's also a really nice feedback section. So if you click the dot, dot, dot next to that, um, you can type in just your issue that you're having. You can also leave an email address for them to respond back to you. And you can let them know with either a smiley or a frowny uh, how you're feeling. So these are just some basic starting resources when you're using VEX code, um, where to get a little more information and more um, higher functionality. But if you ever have any questions, or if there's ever more that you wanted to check out with VexCode, I really encourage you to check out our, um, our free online webinars um, and other events that we have going on. And we do offer VexCode professional development and training as well if that's something you're interested in. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you have a great day.